Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase ended with a banger of a preview of what looks like one of the most promising sci-fi space games for 2023, Starfield. In the gameplay reveal they showed resource collection, character customization, planetary and space exploration and combat, ship customization and thousand planets to be freely explored found in 100 systems. The reveal of this game had me extremely excited, I could not wait to get my hands on it. But then thoughts started creeping into the back of my head. Like how developers have been hyping up their games before delivering and not meeting promises. One of these games is one of the main sources of my channel, No Man's Sky. Extremely beautiful and stunning trailer, but the release was less than truthful. Cyberpunk was another example and Bethesda itself with its Fallout 76 release left many players on their hunger. So while the trailer and the gameplay look incredibly stunning, I feel like keeping our expectations in check is probably a smart position to start from. But if we are to believe Bethesda's reveal of Starfield, what does that mean for other space games? First of all, every time a new game gets released comparisons go wild and while many developers try their best to be different from one another, sometimes it just makes sense for a developer, apart from creating the unique game, to take inspiration directly from the competitor's work as well. That can make it difficult for players who are too wrapped up in their own experiences not to see what makes other video games unique especially when they have been playing the same genre all day long. One thing is for sure, Starfield will have an impact on other games and create a shift in players' focus, even if it's just for a while. The reveal trailer starts off with the cinematic landing on the moon Crete, which looks desolate but beautifully alien. Once you step off the starship, you encounter a few different creatures native to the moon, which look dangerous but don't seem to mean you any harm. Here is where we have our first similarity to another space game, No Man's Sky. With the scanner up, you can see an overview of the planet's resources, flora and fauna, and which you have discovered. The mining itself of the resources looks more star citizen, although it seems less complex and dangerous. Still, I feel I do need to stress once again that both No Man's Sky and Star Citizen, and Elite Dangerous for that matter, have also taken their inspiration from older games before them, so in the end this is just an evolution of game mechanics. When we finally reach the abandoned research facility, it seems we are not the first ones. A pirate faction seems to be inside, raiding the place. Here is where we first encounter planetary combat, which feels very similar to Bethesda's previous game and playstyle. While each of the space games we cover today has combat included, it's clear No Man's Sky does not compete in that area with its siblings. Both Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous do a much better job in this aspect and have way more involved combat mechanics. As said, the combat feels very true to Bethesda's previous games and looks pretty okay. We saw a small preview of what the games will look like and what some of them might be, but knowing Bethesda, there will be most likely a big selection of weapons to choose from. Still, it is hard to tell how it feels until the game actually is released and ready to try out. We also noticed some jetpacks in the game, which is again, nothing new for the space game. When landing on New Atlantis, this was where I had the biggest deja vu yet. The big buildings, the open areas and the NPCs wandering around made me mainly think about Star Citizen. But then again, games like Mass Effect had similar style cities as well. It's only when we start to talk to the first NPC that it becomes clear we are playing a Bethesda game and what they are known for, a well-designed story that will pull you in. I was nevertheless slightly disappointed with the look of the NPCs and the facial animations, so hopefully this is the first draft and we can see some improvements in that area. The game does boast some amazing locations, extraordinary creatures and planetary biomes and definitely feels worth exploring and discovering. Next up was character customization, where there seems to be quite a lot of freedom on how your character looks, but more importantly what the background and traits are, which in return can influence your gameplay and how to approach your missions. It also influences how your character develops over time. This felt very similar to the Mass Effect character creation, which had a very comparable effect on gameplay and character development. Still, Mass Effect was not the first and only one using this, many other games are using this approach as well. The skill system seems to be very in-depth and of course also quite expected of a Bethesda game. Todd then moved onward to the crafting and base building. Now, crafting did only get touched on very briefly and most likely will be similar to their previous approaches. Now, base building did trigger my interest. Still, the preview of it did not show much more apart from the top-down style building, which does seem to look quite basic and more functional 
than allowing creative freedom. Currently, base building is not that common in most space games, apart of course from No Man's Sky, which offers an unparalleled base building experience, and I don't see this change anytime soon. Hiring crew and base staff did sound interesting though, and I will look forward to see what that all entails. One thing that really stood out was ship customization, and this is a pretty unique feature when it comes to recent space games. Don't get me wrong, some older space games do allow ship building, but in all honesty, pale in comparison with the looks of a game like Starfield. Ship customization has been one of the most requested features in No Man's Sky, for example, and at the time of this recording still has not been added to the game. By the way, did you notice the interiors of the Starship? Only one other game has such great detailed ship interior and it's Star Citizen. Ship interiors was another heavily requested feature both for No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous, so Starfield definitely has that going for them. The question however is how many ships you will be able to own in Starfield. All three other games give you a multitude of space in your hangar or freighter to create your own collection of favorite starships. There was no mention of that in this reveal. The fact that you can put so much work and time in customizing your ship made it clear it was not just a piece of decoration, but something you could actually fly. And the footage showing some of the flight and combat in space felt pretty robust at first glance. While there was no demonstration of how in-depth the controls would be and how skilled you have to be, I think it might be not as complicated compared with Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous, but probably more challenging than the No Man's Sky flight controls. By the way, there was also no footage shown at all of leaving or landing on planets, or if there's just a cutscene between them. One thing is for sure, the graphics and sound effects really sound promising, from explosions to the debris tinkling against your ship hull. The last part of this reveal covered the size of the game. They started by explaining that you were not restricted to just the landing zones or cities, but you could land wherever you wanted on the planet's surface and explore it. Then they continued by telling that you could do this for every planet in the system and over 100 systems in the galaxy. That's about 1000 planets to be explored. Now, this could be a big thing. That is, if the planets really are worth exploring. We only have seen glimpses and pieces of biomes and creatures, so the question is how much of this will be handcrafted and what will be procedurally generated? Don't expect Bethesda has been placing every rock and tree and creature manually on thousands of planets. They most likely have used procedural generation to create the thousand planets and then manually crafted important points of interest on them. The rest was just up to the procedural generation. Now, the reason I am so adamant about this is that No Man's Sky community seems to scream every year for more variation and different biomes, which with the size of No Man's Sky, 18 quintillion planets, is just impossible to create every planet unique. Even 1000 planets seems to be quite a stretch for me to make them each unique. There is a reason why Star Citizen is still working on a second system and not having 1000 planets already. It is not that easy to create a complete, unique experience if it's not handcrafted. Still, this is all on paper. We only have seen what they want us to see, making sure we are sold to the concept of the game. We have to wait and see if Bethesda really holds up to the end of their bargain. So, do I believe that Starfield, as promised in their reveal, will have any impact on other space games? Yes, it will indeed. Many fans of the space genre will purchase and play the bejesus out of this game. But it will never kill another space game. I'm honestly wondering why one space game would kill all the others, while so many race games have never done that to each other before. Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky all have established themselves pretty well in the genre, even with the good, the bad and the ugly, they have persevered and have a loyal following that is not planning on leaving their favorite game behind. There is another major difference which has a huge impact on the longevity and popularity of the game. And that is that the games like Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen and No Man's Sky are multiplayer. Now, Starfield is not, which is quite typical for Bethesda's games, and they are quite proud of the fact that they will be creating a masterful single-player experience. But that also means there is no true online community around this game, and you cannot meet up with friends, show them around your base or your ship, and share beautiful discoveries. And yes, I'm aware that the target group that enjoys single-player is still larger than the ones preferring multiplayer, but in my humble opinion, Multiplayer is the main source behind communities and what keeps a game alive longer. So the biggest influence I believe Starfield can have on other developers is that they will have to step up and pick up the pace. Star Citizen, while beautifully complex, is still in alpha state and that after more than 10 years of development. 
While I understand the work that goes into this game, they definitely have had the money and the manpower to get further than they are now. I think once Starfield releases and it truly really lives up to their promise, many players might turn to Star Citizen and wonder what is taking so long. Elite Dangerous, having a rough year and recently cutting off the console platform from further development, took a huge dip in popularity and might actually hurt the most if they do not find a way to pick up the pieces again. And finally, No Man's Sky. While this game is considered a space exploration game, I somehow feel this game lives in a world of its own. It never really competed with Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous and just went about with its own quirky updates. While there are many features that we still would like to see in No Man's Sky, I do not think Hello Games ever intends to compete with Starfield and similar space games. No matter what Starfield really will be on release, there is enough space for more than one space game. Of all the games we have discussed today, each of them have their own unique approach to the genre and will speak to one person more than another. None of them have the patent of being the only space game worth playing. I for one am excited to get Starfield and play it, but it would never destroy my love for No Man's Sky. What are your thoughts on Starfield? Did you enjoy the reveal and would this be a game you would like to play? Let me know in the comments and let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like. Thank you so much for watching. This was Beeblebum. Goodbye for now.